Hi everyone, welcome to our rendering teardown section. My name is Simon and today I'll be sharing with you some thoughts about this really interesting exterior and cold rendering. So, um, what we're dealing with here is this really nice um, building uh, sitting on top of this uh, frozen lake and even though it does look good there are still a couple of things I think that could be fine-tuned to make it really perfect so we're gonna talk about uh, a bit of um, composition a little bit about entourage and detailing and quite a bit about the the fog effect we have here so basically a couple of things regarding like the composition is the overall composition is really good I mean like uh, there's actually like not much to change the only problem I have with this point of view is that I'm not sure the the volumetry of the building is this legible like the the angles are not extremely clear so it might come from like this is a little bit too too flat I guess so I think it's just a matter of maybe changing the focal just a little bit or just changing maybe the the height or just maybe seeing it slightly from a different angle but I think the the overall image is, is really well balanced there's there's nothing much to say maybe it's just a matter of actually um, just double checking the um, like just creating more contrast between the um, whoops more contrast between this face here and the other one here so that you actually understand they're not in the same plane so oh, interesting uh, so that could be achieved by doing so and maybe just uh, so this is really subtle but still I think it makes it a little bit more stand out um, what we're going to talk about quite a bit more is the the fog basically I think the the, the problem I I do have with this image even though it's like really good I think there's something slightly off with the the fog the the lower part here is really well done like we have this sort of a uh, volute stand uh, cloud and it's it's actually quite well done the problem is with the upper part the thing is uh, there are two things to consider here. The first one is that basically when you basically when you're in the in the fog when you're looking up from you, you tend to not be able to see the sky so this is a little bit weird to especially since the fog in our in our situation here comes from the fact that this cold uh, ground here uh, is uh, is touched basically by by air that is a little bit warmer so basically that's the difference of temperature between the two that creates the the fog the the biggest amount of fog should be right where we are so basically when we're looking at the building I mean like this part should be much whiter and actually we shouldn't be able to see the sky at all or at least not that much the only way we could actually see the sky is and that's where it comes my second point is that because we don't really understand what time of the day we are and basically when the fog dissipates it's usually at the either at the very beginning beginning of the day because the sun just hits the ground and uh, warm up the the overall uh, atmosphere so the the fog dissipates or at the end of the day uh, where the fog the sun sorry uh, just hits uh, just like the just like it did in the morning hits the hits the ground and uh, sort of recreates a discrepancy uh, or like balance the discrepancy of temperatures so basically what I mean concretely is that uh, if we want to have this sort of dissipated effect it would mean that we would, should have like a low sun uh, hitting the the overall scene so that means we should have like a uh, more sharp sharper shadows and more direct lighting at least on some part because it could like basically pierce through the the the, the clouds so
it's something cons to consider. And also the thing is that could be interesting with that is that if you had some sort of just like a couple of sun rays piercing through your fog which is dissipating, you can get like a second hue in your image which should be like some uh, interesting uh, tints of orange on your uh, metal cladding or whatever that is, but that seems like metal. And that way you could have something like still feeling cold, but still at the same time have some sort of warmth and uh, really play on this discrepancy between the two hues and the two uh, atmospheres, if I may say. So it's quite complicated to to, to explain and to 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 fine tune, but I think there's there's definitely like basically you can either say this is the middle of the day it's getting quite dark we're turning on the artificial lighting and basically this should actually be whiter and uh, and that's it or you say this is the end of the day we can sort of keep this dissipated effect but we need to show that the sun is actually acting on this and that's why we have this dissipating effect otherwise it cannot really happen another thing that I think is a little bit wrong is that uh, I don't know how the, the fog effect was done but basically you can use like a volumetric uh, or atmospheric uh, pass in uh, in 3ds max for example to get like the like a proper fog but still if you just want to photoshop it you can use the view the z depth uh, pass but the thing is here as you can see the problem is we there's a couple of places where we don't really uh, feel the depth and the one I have in mind is basically this one because as you can see it's it's supposed to sit uh, just right there but even though it's supposed to be behind these trees it's still like only a little bit um, only a little bit foggy so I would suggest like just emphasizing maybe maybe not that much but at least for the tower just a little. Also what you need to know is that um, when you're standing, let's say you're here, and you're looking through the fog, the thing is the fog is going to be the least, you have like this sort of a radius, so basically fog is going to accumulate in this part and this part, which means uh, it's not like, you cannot make it uh, just like a simple fade out when you're going up because actually uh, particles are accumulating as well here in terms of distance because there's going to be like all this part here so what I mean by that is that basically uh, this should be a little bit wider and this is the closer closest part so this should be a little bit more defined Anyway, it's just a matter of like really playing around to, and the fog is a really good way to, or a good, um, a good tool to show like, or ma really make the depth uh, more emphasized. You could sincerely just not get rid of the tower, but just like really like push it and just go, yeah, like that. It wouldn't really hurt, I guess. I guess that's pretty much it for the fog. It's it's quite a complicated effect to to understand and to to master, but still, it's uh, it's really well done in this image. But there are still like a couple of stuff to fine tune, as I said. The last thing I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about is the uh, H HSV. So when we're dealing with contrast here, so uh, I often say that basically when you're the the contrasted part of an image is going to be where you're going to look, but uh, the thing is, contrast doesn't necessarily happen all the time. So if we're staying on this uh, variation of the image where we don't have the sun coming from the right, since we have fog, the ambient light is going to be uh, like extremely homogeneous, which means we cannot really have much contrast. So basically, like this guy here is actually too, like there's too much contrast on this guy. So I should do something like could actually uh, just do something like that and 
the closer the things get, the more contrast they're going to get because they're less, there's less fog in front of it, but otherwise the contrast is going to decrease quite quickly, so that's something you have to keep in mind. The other thing you can check here is that in, in terms of saturation. Uh, saturation, here we, we're dealing with artificial lighting, so basically this part and this part should be the most saturated part of the image, which is not exactly the case here, so we need to emphasize that a little bit. So we would do something like this, just to just push a little bit. That way it's going to warm up the image, but still, <laughs> while being at least uh, at the same time more realistic. So it's it's a tiny difference, but still, in terms of a uh, realistic realism, sorry, it's it's more accurate. And the final thing is regarding the the overall um, color palette. Here, as you can see, we have like a lot of blue uh, hue, which is not necessarily a pro problem since we have the uh, artificial lighting here to balance. Also, one thing we can do here is maybe uh, change a little bit the hue, hue sorry, of uh, of one of the lights so that we can have like slight variation and get something maybe a little bit more orange here or like the other, the other way around doesn't matter but just have like slight variation. Coming back to what I was saying regarding hues, uh, even though this is like a, a good image, uh, what you have to potentially keep in mind is that when we, when I was uh, suggesting to have like the sun coming from the like where wherever it's supposed to come from, but you, that way you could have like an interesting uh, gradient between the blue and the, the orange part. So that's something to keep in mind when you're dealing with uh, your image, just to know what kind of tints you're going to be dealing with. I think that's it for today. As you can see, the the difference is not like, well, there's a, quite a difference, but still we were like already quite there. So uh, anyway, I really hope you've learned some interesting stuff for your that you can use for your next renderings and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing any of your comments. So yeah, thank you for your attention guys and see you later. Bye!